There is an antioxidant that's 6,000 times stronger than vitamin C. It's a compound by the name of astaxanthin, and algae produce it as a response to environmental stress such as UV radiation. In a very crude way, when we eat it, we experience a similar benefit. And yet I would say that for the vast majority of people, I would not recommend astaxanthin. To know if it's suitable for you, it's very important for you to understand an up-to-date model of aging that I will explore further in this video. Hi, my name is Sunny if you're new here and I'm a junior doctor from Australia, passionate about health, fitness and longevity. I've completed a Bachelor of Medical Science which allows me to understand research to a high level. If you're interested in this type of content, then please consider subscribing. For today, to start off with, what is astaxanthin? Astaxanthin is a carotenoid, which means it is a type of pigment found in various organisms such as the microalgae Haematococcus pluvialis. It is naturally produced as a stress response when this algae experiences a lack of nutrients increased salinity or excessive sunshine. Organisms that subsequently feed on this algae then proceed to carry this molecule as well. This can include salmon, red trout, red sea bream, as well as crustaceans. So what makes astaxanthin special? It all comes down to the underlying structure. Astaxanthin contains a conjugated double bond, which means that the single and double bonds alternate. I won't go into unnecessary detail, but this allows for delocalized electrons to move through the whole system, which helps astaxanthin to scavenge free radicals. Secondly, astaxanthin is lipid soluble, which allows it to pass into the cell membrane, helping to stabilize and protect against reactive oxygen species. Finally, it has been proposed that astaxanthin can trigger antioxidant pathways such as NRF2, whilst blocking inflammatory pathways. Again, I won't go into too much more detail for this as it's quite niche and doesn't help us that much. To understand the next part of the video, it is very important for me to explain an updated fundamental theory of aging. If you can understand this, then you will also appreciate if you are in the demographic for which astaxanthin is appropriate. Scientists once thought that reactive oxygen species, which are molecules produced by the mitochondria during metabolism, caused aging by damaging cells. However, recent studies have shown that reactive oxygen species might help organisms live longer in certain conditions. For example, there was an unexpected observation that increased reactive oxygen species prolonged lifespan in yeast and worms. Another Cochrane review found no benefit from antioxidant supplements for primary or secondary prevention. In fact, beta carotene and vitamin E seem to paradoxically increase mortality and so did higher doses of vitamin A. This has led scientists to rethink the role of reactive oxygen species in aging. One possible explanation is that they act as stress signals that help the cells respond to damage. Due to a phenomenon known as reverse causality, we may have incorrectly concluded that the reactive oxygen species are causing the aging itself, when in fact it's in response to stress. When an organism is young, reactive oxygen species may promote survival by triggering repair and protective mechanisms. As an organism ages, the level of reactive oxygen species may rise naturally as part of this survival response, but eventually they may end up doing more harm than good. So instead of simply being a cause of aging, reactive oxygen species could be a protective response that over time becomes counterproductive. This new view helps explain why the effects of reactive oxygen species on aging seem to vary in different situations. It's very similar to the idea that inflammation itself isn't inherently bad. It's a natural process that when it becomes excessive, you get pathology and interventions targeted at reducing inflammation subsequently need to be incorporated. Whilst we are on the topic of inflammation, we know that astaxanthin is bioabsorbed in the body. 
In one study in women, it had a dose-dependent relationship with 2 milligrams and 8 milligrams of oral supplementation. This study also showed that astaxanthin supplementation reduced levels of plasma C reactive protein, which is produced by the liver when the body is in an inflammatory state, as well as significantly reducing a marker of oxidative damage. So, going back to the topic of excessive inflammation, situations where astaxanthin may be useful include if you are quite elderly, so greater than the age of 65, as that is the point where excessive inflammation may begin to have a counterproductive effect. Secondly, if you are at risk of skin deterioration, then astaxanthin may be beneficial. Chronic astaxanthin use has been shown to suppress age-associated skin degradation and improve skin disorders caused by environmental injury through its anti-inflammatory effect. A review of clinical trials of astaxanthin supplementation on skin health also shows significant benefits. It improved barrier function, decreased skin wrinkling, decreased transepidermal water, as well as reduced UVA-induced skin damage. There was also a study performed in February 2024 which demonstrated a longevity boost in mice. In this study, in genetically heterogeneous mice, the NRF2 activator astaxanthin extended the median male mice lifespan by 12%. In addition, in another study, it was shown to extend the maximum lifespan of worms by up to 20%. This actually reminds me of a similar video I have on taurine, an amino acid that has been shown to extend lifespan in mice and worms, as well as humans. The effects are extremely significant and it's a compound that's easy to supplement with. You can check out that video here. Also, if you found this video informative, then please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon and I'll see you in the next one.